to talk about these new owls. You know, today was a great day for the Rice Owls. The 2023 early signing class consists of 24 players representing eight different states, including Ohio, Tennessee, Pennsylvania, Missouri, New Jersey, California, and 16, two thirds of the class from the great state of Texas. So that's, that's exactly how we designed it to be. And it's always great when that, when that comes to form in total, five of our transfers are, or five of our signees, I should say are transfers, including one of them coming from a junior college, one from division two, one from division three and two from FBS power five institutions. Uh, we believe this class will take us soaring to new heights. You know, uh, it's something that we've talked about with this class for a long time. We've been fired up about the high school component and uh, some of the guys that will join us early uh, being the first year we've ever had early enrollees at Rice will have four join us, four high school kids join us in January. And we're excited about those guys. From a metric standpoint, it's the highest ranked class in Rice history. It includes two of the top four prospects we've signed since we've been here as a staff. And those two are Ty Morris and Joseph Matumbo. And it has the highest rated recruit uh, in the rating era, era and that's uh, transfer JT Daniels. So really excited about this group. I think our recruiting staff has done a great job identifying, recruiting, and now signing this class. As guys graduate from our program, we know that recruiting is the lifeblood of your program. You've got to replace them with guys that continue to allow your program to ascend when you lose those talented in individuals. Uh, we've got a lot of guys in this class that we think can be immediate impact guys. We're, that's that always excites us when there's guys that can challenge for positions that can jump on the field and make you better from an athletic standpoint. That's the exciting thing about recruiting. That's why we all follow signing day the way that we do. Uh, it brings new talent, new lifeblood, as we said, into your program. Uh, the days of reflection of all the great things that are happening in our program that helped us attract these talented young men and their families. Our football team got stronger today because of these recruits. And I'd like to thank everybody involved, because as I always say, when it comes to recruiting, it takes a village. It takes so many people to help these young men and their families decide that Rice University is the right place for them to be a true student athlete. So some of those thank yous is our faculty and our administration for having trust in our football program. Thankful for them helping us continue to grow this program in the right direction as we embark on the American Conference. Uh, very, very excited about that opportunity as we talked about in the past. Our faculty specifically for coming out on weekends and spending time with our student athletes on official visits, going to breakfasts on breakfast on a Saturday. To, uh, we had one professor this year, mechanical engineer professor, Dr. Travis, who was sitting at breakfast and we explained to him we were in a fight for this young man with Vanderbilt and some other institutions. And he said, wait, he's interested in mechanical engineering. So then he says, you've got to bring him over to the Ostman kitchen, which is basically the engineering lab here at Rice. And so we tours him and his family all around. He explains to me that's how they win recruits in the, in the engineering world. And uh, it's amazing. He took all this time. He's at every game. And he's just like, coach, this means a lot to me. Let's get this kid. And, and it helped us get Ashton uh, and his family won over. So when you've got that kind of synergy on campus where the professors are helping, it, it just it really means the world to me that they're helping us advance our program. Our administration, President Re Reggie DeRoche, Dr. Joe Carlgaard, Rick Mello, and Tori Houston for giving us the tools to keep this program growing every single day, uh, including allowing us to make the necessary commitment and hire a recruiting team that we did this past year. Thank you to that recruiting team, Marco Regalado, Lee Menifee, Jessica Mori, Kirsten Hardiman, Sean Anderson, and Greg Liberty for all that they do, all the tireless work, all the film that they watch, all the things that they do, all the conversations that they have. Uh, it's just made a huge difference in our recruiting effort. And we couldn't have had this successful of a class without all of those people involved. Always want to thank our coaches because they are the ones that show these kids how they can help them on the field. They sit there and watch film on Zoom with them. They watch their film. They're always trying to help and build these relationships because it does take a village. And, and you know what, Rice, like our coaches are on planes, trains, and automobiles all over this country. And uh, with that being said, this time of month in December, our, our coaches' wives turn into single parents. And then we all come home on the weekend and they host official visits. And they're showing these families uh, exactly how we are a Rice football family. And the best compliment that we get all the time is that everybody says family and recruiting, but people leave here feeling family. And that means the world to me. And that's again, because of the selflessness of our wives and our coaches and the way they show everybody how we live. 
Uh, just an example of that. We got back from the bowl game Sunday at 2 a.m. And uh, we got back to the facility and we had three official visitors in Sunday. And people were picking them up at the airport at seven o'clock. Coaches and their wives were, were again, hosting them all day long. And it's just the way it's got to be. It's the way you, it's got to be if you want to continue to move your program forward. I also want to thank our players who host these kids and they talk to them about the great things going on in our program. In addition to that, they also give us reports on if these young men will be a good fit for our program. And uh, do they fit culturally? Do they understand what it's going to take to be a student athlete here? What our standards are and they want to uphold them. And lastly, our recruits families for putting their trust in me and the coaching staff to help us grow their young men uh, on and off the field in, in every single way. So with those thank yous, again, you can tell I'm excited about this group, and I really am I'm excited about this new group of owls, and I'll briefly touch on all these guys. Uh, starting with Dalen Alexander, five foot nine, 200 pound running back from Pflugerville. He's a guy that was handpicked by CJ Anderson. You know, CJ watched a ton of running backs. We had many great ones on the board, and Dalen's one that was committed someplace else when we first started recruiting him, and we were able to show him why it was worth staying home, staying home in this state and uh, becoming a Rice Owl. Brant Bakes is a six foot seven, 300. It says 300 on here. I feel like he's more like 330 or 340. He, he fills up a whole doorway. He's one of our transfers from Nebraska. He was Luke McCaffrey's uh, roommate their first spring at Nebraska back in 2019 when they went there uh, and lived together. And as, as it happens, he lives uh, like three blocks behind the Whataburger up here on Holcomb is where he grew up. So the stars couldn't align better. With Brant, he's a guy that played in 26 games for the Huskers, and he also played uh, on the basketball team. So a really good athlete, and I uh, think he has the position flexibility. He's shown it in Big Ten games to play guard and tackle. So very excited about him. Bo Barton, six foot two, 200 pound linebacker from Van, Texas, guy that runs sideline to sideline and makes plays. We had him in camp. He showed the ability to cover. And uh, a guy who's been really strong, strongly committed since day one, since we got him involved in this program. Nate Bledsoe is a six foot four, 285 pound offensive lineman from uh, Collierville, Tennessee, right there in the Memphis area. Got two offensive linemen from that Memphis area. They actually got a chance to play against each other this year. So that was kind of cool. But a guy that I, I think is a great leader, a guy that could play any of the inside spots is what we see in a perfect world with the flex to actually go outside because of his length and play tackle in a pinch. Next up, D lineman Jordan Campbell, six foot three, 240 pounds, uh, originally from Middlesex, New Jersey, played at Nassau Community College uh, for a friend of ours, a friend of Coach Smith's and I, Coach Koo, who uh, just raved about him. And then we had a chance to really start studying him and seeing some of the things he did athletically, and we could see him being a great fit in our system, either at the end or the rush spot. Christopher Clark from Fur High School here in Houston. He is a six foot two, 250 pound defensive lineman. We see him as an interior defensive lineman. That's where he played as well. And uh, he was the defensive MVP for his district. And that's hard to do when you play one of those interior defensive line positions. So fired up to have Chris joining us. Next up, cornerback, six foot 180, Jamarian Clark goes by JC Clark. JC will be one of our early enrollees. He also won a state title uh, last weekend. So he's won back-to-back -back state titles at South Oak Cliff uh, out of Dallas. Next is Coleman Coco, six foot five, 265 pound D lineman, originally from Pittsburgh, coming to us from Colgate. If you guys remember back, uh, we had Javon Wolford that came here from Colgate and played a couple of years for us. Coleman had always heard those stories about how good things were here. And uh, so when we called, he was very interested and, uh, He's a young man that uh, we're excited to get on campus. I think he has the ability to help us at that defensive end spot. Next up, a six foot two, 226 pound quarterback, JT Daniels. Uh, some of the stories circulating last night, they're all true. I feel like I've recruited him for 10 years. I guess it's only been eight years, but I've known him forever and uh, have wanted to coach him forever. And uh, so again, as he and I are saying now, the fourth time's the charm. And I'm just really glad it's working out. I think he is. Uh, maybe the most talented kid uh, quarterback I recruited in my time at Stanford. He was the first kid we offered in that class, which was originally the class of 19 before he reclassified. And uh, just talking ball with him, talking ball with him and Tui the other day, you can just see what a great fit it's going to be. 
So incredibly excited about JT and all he brings to our football team. Next up is a five foot 10, 170 pound wide receiver, Drayden Dickman, uh, a receiver that is a deep threat. He's run a 1066 100 meter dash. I mean, he really can, can fly and you see it on his film. You see him separating, you see him creating uh, distance between him and the defender and then finishing the play, coming down with the football. Our tight end, uh, our high school tight end in this class, six foot six, 235 pound James Falk. He caught 10 passes this year as a senior, but he's also a guy that's a dominant blocker. He blocks like a uh, offensive lineman in their scheme and then does catch the football. As we say around here, Coach Jackson said at a clinic last summer, tight ends are offensive linemen with wings. They got to be able to do both. And uh, he showed the ability to do both. Next up, another local product from down at Ridge Point High School, six foot six, 270 pound Peyton Farmer. Uh, many of y'all will remember Rick LaFavors who coached here and he and I GA'd together at, at Alabama. Rick is the head coach at Ridge Point. He just kept sending me video of this kid. He's like, coach, you got to take a look. You got to take a look. And there's just so much good to this frame uh, on his 6'6", 270 pound frame. And then he's a 315 pound clean and jerk guy. He can, he can move the bar, move a lot of weight. Powerful guy that uh, certainly his best football will be ahead of him. And he's another one that will join us in January. Another offensive tackle, six foot six, 300 pound Philip Gallegos. Uh, just a, a really good prospect. A kid that every game he played, I feel like he got better. We got to watch the film and see him continue to grow. He's one that, um, you know, as, as we started talking about these guys that are, have those ready-made frames, you always worry about when you have them in a class because you got you to gotta get those hooks deep. You got to make them understand that we can do so much for them here at a place like Rice University because they're getting those bigger offers in the power five cents all the time and those guys that interest. And he's another one that was able to shut those things down. Next on the list is a tight end, six foot three, 225 pound Matt Hall, transferring to us from a division two school where he was a division two All-American. And uh, come to find out, we're starting to recruit him. And we realized that his sister's Caroline Hall, that some of you may remember, she was uh, part of our creative team our first couple of years here. And, um, you know, as, as luck would have it, he had come down to visit her for Thanksgiving and went to one of our practices uh, back in 2018. And they talked about how cool it would be if, if someday he could play here. So this thing's come full circle. It's a great fit. He's a guy that, that does a lot. Caught 38 passes for 367 yards this year. Our quarterback, our high school quarterback in this class, six foot tall, 185 pound Chase Jenkins, a guy that, you know, I, I've seen play for a number of years and uh, saw it at a TCU camp years ago in the summer and had a chance to really like watch him and watch his mechanics. And then just the growth he had going to a leaf Taylor and uh, meeting with all of his players. Like he met like the offensive coordinator, he'd bring his guys in, he'd teach in the classroom. Uh, he was just a phenomenal leader uh, on the field as well as in the classroom. And a guy that we think is an incredible fit for us. And like some of the guys in this class was one of the ones that kind of became part of our recruiting team. They started recruiting other people in this area and, drumming up a lot of interest for the Rice Owls. The highest ranked high school prospect in this class, six foot two, 195 pound Ty Anthony Morris uh, from Decaney. We've had some uh, good success from Decaney High School over the years. We know there's some talented individuals there. The reason Ty means everything to us is he had tons of offers and his brother is a member of our football team. So that's one where his parents have seen everything. They see how we do business. They see how we treat our kids and they chose to give us their other son. So that's always a, a thing that means the world to me when they feel that way about our coaching staff and this university. The second highest ranked kid in the class is Joseph Matumbo, six foot five, 240 pound rush. We got him listed as a defensive lineman. We see him playing that rush spot using his great length. Uh, we think the future is incredibly bright for Joseph as well. Luke Needham is the other offensive lineman I referenced from Memphis, six foot five, 300 pounds. We see him as playing any of those inside spots when you talk about center over the both, both of the guards. So we're excited about Luke and think uh, he'll have a bright future here, to say the least. We have a transfer coming from a D3 institution, Ethan Powell, six foot five, 215 pounds. Uh, you talk about like D3. Okay, what do we know about D3 football? Well, you know that nobody's on scholarship. You know that they play football because they absolutely love the game. And that's what you get when you talk to this young man. Uh, and he was exceptional. He was the MVP of his team this year, and he averaged 18.3 yards per catch. So really excited to get Ethan here and get him going. And uh, although he played a lot of receiver 
at his institution at Southwestern University. We do see him playing mostly tight end at the off the ball, F tight end, if you will. Another receiver, six foot tall, 170 pound, landed ransom goals. Uh, a guy that will come in January, just like we described, Drayton Dickman has speed, separates, catches the ball, finishes. So incredibly excited about him. Another one from right up the road in spring, AJ Stevens, five foot 11, 175 pound cornerback, makes plays. Uh, we mess with him all the time. He had a couple dropped interceptions early in the year, and I always mess with him about. That's why he plays defense, but. He found a way to finish some of those plays later in the year, and we expect him to do that for the Rice Owls. So ex certainly excited he's coming down. Six foot, 195 pound safety, Ashton Ojiaku uh, from Foster High School right down the road. Coach McDowell loves him, has, has talked to him, talked to us about him for a long time. He's another one that had SEC offers. He had a lot of opportunities. He's the one I referenced earlier uh, that we took to the Oshman uh, kitchen where we do all the mechanical engineering and got to see all the projects and had a great visit with him and convinced him that this is the right place for him. We're going to play Ashton at safety. Many of his offers were for running back and he was uh, the touchdown club of Houston's one of the um, finalists for the touchdown club of Houston's offensive player of the year. So certainly has some position flexibility, but starting him at safety. Another one of those inside offensive linemen, six foot four, 295, 90 pound Patrick Valiant. Patrick was one of those guys that was uh, in Ohio. They'd be up at 5 a.m. He's running the lifting groups. He and his dad are making sure everybody's getting in there. They're picking people up. He's just a great leader, loves this game of football. And uh, he played in the state championship game. He led his team. Uh, he and his twin brother led the team on a great run this year. They were fun to watch. And then lastly, uh, the teammate, from up at Aldine as well. Uh, Justin Williams Jr., six foot, 380 pound wide receiver. Great catch radius, uh, sh has showed the ability for the big play as well, but the catch radius is the thing we love and uh, we look forward to having him join our offense. So that is the 24 Owls in the 2023 early signing class. With that, I will open it up for any questions. Thank you, uh, look forward to the team. Well, I think Jen, JT, since I started recruiting him, I thought he could be a generational quarterback. And nothing's changed. This is not a kid that needs to go to rehab for anything off the field or anything like that. This is a kid that, that studies football and does the right things. He's completely locked in. He needs an opportunity to be in a pro-style system. I think it's an absolute win-win for both of us. But I, I had him again, like in camps. I talked to him about protection when he was a freshman in high school, things that – Many college quarterbacks couldn't fathom or understand why you would do. It made sense to him as a freshman. So the things that we'll be able to do with him scheme-wise and Coach Tui's going to be able to do with him are off the charts. His accuracy on intermediate throws is unbelievable. He throws a great deep ball. I, I don't know what he can't do as a quarterback. Yeah, I, I don't know about messages. I think what it sends to – hopefully anybody in our building, whether it's players or what have you, is like, we're in it to win it. Like we're coming into the American. We know it's a big step. Uh, we feel like we've got some talented pieces in this building. We're trying to assemble a couple more, just bring a couple more in to either increase competition or change the, the who's going to be the starter, who's going to be on the field for us to make sure that we can compete, understanding the jump that going into the American is. That jump going into the American. Yeah, Matt, I mean, that's a great point. It's something we've wished for for a long time. Uh, they set out a set of parameters of what it had to look like in terms of what the student profile had to look like. And we have found four kids that matched it. Uh, it even included a meeting with Dr. Joe Carlgaard to talk about the process and some of those things. And all of them passed with flying colors. And yeah, they'll be here uh, two weeks from today. I believe they move in. So uh, it'll be fast and furious, but it is a big step forward for our program. Um, and especially when you talk about somebody like Chase Jenkins, the ability to come in and learn a semester earlier, get another spring ball in. Those are big deals. <laughs> the process was eight years in the making uh, and recruiting him. Uh, I guess at Stanford as well as here and then uh, on every jump of the way. But uh, again, there's this takes a village, as we said. And it, I think like our relationship was great. 
uh, his relationship with Coach Tui and Coach Tui reaching out to him every step of the way and trying to help him every step of the way, every move. And recruiting him initially means the world as well. But uh, I can tell you that uh, it was a very happy moment in our household uh, when JT said he was coming last night. Even the dog was excited. I mean, everybody. Uh, just looking at the, the whole list, uh, ended up with three receivers, quarterbacks, six offensive linemen, uh, the whole house of, of offensive commitments. Uh, and I, when you went to put your original whiteboard together, planning this class, you think you'd end up with somebody on that side of the wall? <laughs> Yes, is a simple answer, but maybe not in that exact breakdown. Because uh, I was stressed when we took a commitment for a fifth offensive lineman back when we did last summer. But I thought they were too talented. And looking at what you see in the portal many times where the talent doesn't match the recruitment level, we understand that we've got to develop and grow them at our level. So if we can get those great pieces of clay, put them in our program with Coach Straub, with Coach Davis, we got a real chance to get those guys growing up the right way as you're starting to see with Ethan Aniawa and some of those guys. So it, the, the targets were there for four offensive linemen. We took a fifth. And then just as, as people decide to graduate or things happen as they do in football, then the need for a grad transfer to come in uh, was there. And obviously Grant was just a home run from the jump. And then with that, you mentioned getting back from the bowl game, had a bit of business and we're here and I was a couple days ago. Yeah. Um, yeah. What is the Well, luckily, like you have a lot more information and you, you have a lot more time. It sounds like the process from one thing to the other is very fast, but the, these decisions are in the works all year as these classes are now. So uh, thankfully, yeah, we didn't have to do anything that kind of rushed to judgment or anything like that. But it's it's all real positive. What'd you say? Six offensive linemen, three receivers, two quarterbacks, and a partridge in a pear tree. That's about right, right? Three tight ends, yeah. Three tight ends. Oh. Yeah, coach, you pretty much touched on everything. But I just wanted to ask you about you know the fact that you're going to a, a new conference. Was there a certain type of athlete that you felt you needed to uh, recruit to uh, play in the new conference? Yeah, I think there is. And it's just an understanding that what we recruited in the past to compete in that conference is not going to work in the next one. And like we saw that every year when we played Houston and how athletic they were across the street. Right. So we had a good understanding of the athleticism it would take to be successful in that conference. Now, uh, also playing Houston this year and, and being able to hit them in the mouth a little bit and um, then see them go on to do some really good things in the American also gives us a lot of hope that as long as we're signing the right kids from an athletic standpoint, we can make some noise in that conference. Thank you, Coach. Thank, Thank you. Anyone else? Go ahead, Go ahead, Sam. Mike, I just want to go back to JT for a second. I know you said you recruited him when you were back at Stanford. What was your first impression of him when you first saw him as a high school recruit way back then? Yeah, so Coach Rollo and uh, Coach Dave Money were his head coach and offensive coordinator, respectfully. And Coach Money is somebody that I, I kind of talked ball with for a while. And after he had his hands on JT for one camp, uh, I guess it would have been like their summer of his going into his ninth grade year. Money called me. He was like, Coach, you won't believe this kid. You won't believe how he gets it. You won't believe the throws he can make. And um, so I started looking at him, started studying him, and uh, I believe we had him in camp that summer. And that's really when I got to talk protection with him and, and got to hear him express some of the things he was seeing pre-snap from evaluating safeties to understanding fronts and things that just aren't normal for, for a freshman in high school, you know, and that's when it was so impressive to me. Like this kid is, is special. And that's when I started again, talking our staff into it, talking coach Shaw into it. Like he, he was the first one we offered in that class because we believed the difference he could make as a quarterback in a program. How much does that, uh, not just the belief, but also that long standing relationship, matter in a process like this where obviously he's looking to to make an impact somewhere as he finishes his college career obviously you guys have known each other for a long time how much does that trust matter in a process like this yeah I think that's a great question to ask him but I can tell you from my vantage point it meant everything because like you see people go in the portal every day right like and big time people go in the portal every day 
And there's some that we don't want to reach out to, like, because you've heard bad things or you just don't have a relationship. You don't know uh, what you'd be getting. And I think, like, for me, knowing what JT is, for the fact that even after he was done at Georgia last year, that he let Tui and I come to his house and talk ball with him in, in, in Athens last year and sit there and talk to him about what we thought we could do for him. I realized he was the same JT last year. Then getting him here on Sunday, he's the same JT. He's the same dude that is absolutely crazy about football, that wants to study it like a coach. And he wants to be successful and uh, he's not going to let anything outside just detract him from that. And so I think that's really exciting. You know, I had a chance to talk to AJ last night after JT committed. And I just told AJ, I was like, man, look, you know, everything's a meritocracy. Like that's how we roll. So like, don't worry about a thing, but I I'll tell you this, like if, if you end up uh, that you're the number two behind uh, JT Daniels and you learn how he studies and how he prepares, there's a lot worse things in the world than you spending a year as his backup and learning from that. And he was completely on board. You know, I mean, AJ's a competitor. He's not going to just give the job to him by any stretch of the imagination, but um, he's excited that JT's coming. He's excited to learn some of those things. And, you know, I, I talked to JT about Chase coming in. I talked to him about Wiley Green and how I think Wiley can really help him continue to take steps. But it was interesting last night. The only thing JT was stressed about is like when he could get the playbook. That's the only thing. Like, once I signed the GIA, can I get the playbook? And it's like, yeah. And I was like, well, tell me what you need. Because he and Tui had went through all the installs or many of the initial installs. And he's like, coach, I'm a big gamer. And I want to get all this information into Madden so I can start getting myself acclimated and understand the concepts and understand this and that. And I was like, wow, great. Let's do it. So, uh, again, now that that's signed, that formality is out of the way, we can get him all that information today and let him go, uh, go play the game and get better at football. Thing. Um, I'd like to start off by thanking Coach Bloom for giving me an opportunity. You know, I, I was a high school coach. I got into college football. And the only way I could do that was moving 2,000 miles away from anything I can call family to the, uh, the ice line they call the Palouse in the middle of a snowstorm. But, you know, last May when I got a text from Coach Bloom uh, that suddenly asked me, do you want to come home? I mean, nothing made me happier. So I appreciate him giving me that opportunity and kind of letting me run with this opportunity. Um, I also really want to thank the recruiting staff and they're all back here because this isn't something that could be done alone. You know, I want to start off with Sean Anderson and Greg Liberty. Those are guys, those are, those are ball coaches. And to have their expertise, their eyes, their knowledge in the recruiting department helping me out in, the, in terms of evaluating film is priceless. It makes my life easier and it helps us find even higher quality talent. I want to thank Kirsten Hardiman She's not in here because she's hard at work right now, uh, pumping out graphics and videos. We were here till one in the morning last night. She was here at 5.30. She actually beat me to the office. She was here at 5.30 in the morning, still cranking out graphics and videos. And, and nowadays with recruiting, that's extremely important. I want to give a thank you to Jessica Mori, our director of on-campus recruiting, who has taken this role and absolutely run with it. And for as little experience as she has, she's done a great job because if you were to tell any recruiting or on-campus person that you had to recruit, host a recruiting visit with 20 recruits, they probably would have tossed their keys at you and quit. Like, and uh, I maybe just because she hadn't done it before, but she did it and it was very successful and everybody had a great time. Now I want to give a huge thanks to Lee Menifee, who I, I absolutely would not be able to do my job without him in terms of he does a lot of the behind the scenes work, uh, getting kids into school. He's our direct liaison with administration, uh, compliance, admissions. A lot of the stuff that people don't want to do, he does it, and he does it really well. So thank you, everybody. Thank you to the coaching staff. Um, like I said, I'm just glad to be here. Mark Ross, who you got, you did you still living on the street? What did you say about uh, your staff? I mean, being involved in athletics means you're competitive. And I didn't want to come here and be complacent. You know, I came in here with those aspirations. And that's something I told Bloom in my interview. So first things first, we're going to recruit Texas. And second, we're going to be really dang good at it. So, you know, that's just, you know, I don't, I don't call plays or anything like that. This is the competitive nature in me. And yes, I watch those, those, those rankings religiously because that's what we strive to be. And I had people patting me on the back like, hey, man. But you know, this best recruiting class in history and all stuff. So I was just still mad we got passed up second place or that we weren't first because that's what you strive to be. You strive to be the best. And I, especially, you know, moving to this new conference and the way, you know, everybody in this building works, we want to be the best.
What's it like? What's it like? Change in the calculated because I know I gave to Daniel to, you know, as a, a pedigree that precedes him doesn't count. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily count towards the numbers, but it counts for us. You know, it's something it's, it, it, it really, I think uh, Lee pointed it out earlier. We were trending on Twitter. Like uh, JT Daniels was like the 15th trending thing on Twitter. So again, people were talking about the Rice Owls and that's recruiting. That helps. Anyone online with a question? Go ahead, Sam. Marco, I'm curious, how did you embrace the challenge of, of recruiting here versus obviously, you know, just some unique challenges you have recruiting to this place versus kind of what your past experience was? And where did you find like the margins to to kind of exploit to kind of get some of the guys that you want to get? Gosh, and you know, people call it a challenge. It's to me, it's not challenging. We just have a smaller pool to pick from. And you really get high quality kids. It's, it's really a, it's a breath of fresh air. Once you have conversations with these kids and families and stuff like that, that really, really want to invest themselves in rice. And it was something easy for me to really just kind of like dive in and immerse myself into, because as our, one of our players said in their pregame speech last week, you know, you know, we are intellectuals, but we are, you know, we're here to compete and do really good. But, you know, I academics was something that always was stressed to me growing up. My mom is an educator. Her father was an educator and administrator. So uh, being able to, you know, just relate in that sense, uh, being, you know, stressing academics and also really being in love with athletics and the, and the, and the sport of football was easy to relate to these kids. Uh, but again, it's, there's always really good athletes. And just because you have to search for kids with the highest grades doesn't mean you're going to have to, you know, scale back in terms of the level of athlete you can get. Yeah, we're going to have to look a little harder, but they're out there. And you, you mentioned the social media part just a minute ago. I'm curious, how much effort do you guys put to kind of build some buzz around this program? And how much does that buzz matter in recruiting in your, in your mind? Um, I, I think it just happens organically. Um, I think, you know, Bloom has said it best, you know, it's, it's what I do on social media. What we do on social media isn't something trying to like some facade of something we aren't. We're just kind of putting ourselves out there. This is who we are. And I think there's such a, a good amount of genuine people in this building that people just tend to gravitate towards it and really be interested and really bought into what we're doing here at Rice. Yeah, 